Debat. Debate. Member for Halifax. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for the applause. <laughs> it's very much appreciated. First day back. Uh, Mr. Speaker, every day, over 16,000 lives are lost in the world to HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria, and other treatable infectious diseases, according to the Global Fund. In 2009, 33.3 million people around the world were living with HIV AIDS. 1.8 million of them died from the infection, and 260,000 of those people were children. 97% of people infected with HIV AIDS are in low and middle wealth countries, and while almost 50 million people infected in these countries were in need of antiviral drugs, only 5.2 million were treated. Mr. Speaker, I'm very pleased to speak to Bill C-393, which would fix key flaws in the Canadian, Canada's access to medicines regime, CAMR or CAMR. I've eagerly been awaiting this opportunity because 393 is a bill that I talk about a lot with my constituents in Halifax. I get letters about CAMR, I get phone calls, I've been to events around Nova Scotia like the Malaika Grandmother's event Scrabble for Africa or Good Words for Africa. It's a Scrabble fundraiser to raise money for HIV AIDS and to raise awareness of Bill C-393. I get postcards from the Grandmothers to Grandmothers campaign. I've received letters from the HIV AIDS legal network. And I'm a member of the All Party HIV AIDS and TB Caucus, or the HAT Caucus, where I've listened to Stephen Lewis and James Orbinski talk about 393. I've received Facebook messages and tweets. I've been stopped on the streets. I've talked to students about this legislation, doctors, community activists, and retired politicians, health policy experts, and grandmother after grandmother after grandmother. And they all say the same thing, support Bill C-393 in its original form. One letter I received was from the international NGO Oxfam, and I'd like to read this letter to my colleagues in the House because I think it simply and effectively communicates everything we need to know about this bill. It reads like this, Dear Member of Parliament, you have an amazing opportunity right now. There's a bill in front of the House that would save lives around the world without costing Canadian taxpayers a dime. In many places in the world, countless people are dying every day of AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, and a host of other diseases. But these deaths are preventable. What these countries need is access to generic medications. The good news is the political will exists to ensure this access. In 2004, Parliament unanimously passed legislation creating Canada's access to medicines regime, CAMR or CAMR. The bad news is CAMR is broken. As the legislation functions now, generic drug manufacturers are required to negotiate with patent holders on a country-by-country -country and drug-by-drug -drug basis before they're able to distribute affordable, life-saving medicines. Due to this complexity and difficulty of use, CAMR has been deemed unworkable in its present form. In more than six years, CAMR has resulted in only one order of one AIDS drug to one country. But wait, there's more good news. Bill C-393, in its original form, would solve this problem. It contains a one license solution which would eliminate the need for separate negotiations with patent holders for each purchasing country and each order of medicines. It would provide a more workable process to get affordable medicines for people in developing countries. And it would do all of this while meeting every one of Canada's international legal obligations, including WTO rules. Please commit to voting to restore the one license solution to Bill C-393. You will be directly responsible for saving lives. Thank you. And as I said, this is a letter that, that many of my colleagues in the House would have received from Oxfam, and I think it doesn't get plainer or simpler than that, Mr. Speaker. As members of Parliament, as representatives of our communities, we could be directly responsible for saving lives. or we could all be implicated in Canada's refusal to help and watch by the sidelines as more and more people die. It's up to each and every one of us in this House to make a decision about what side of this issue we're on. Mr. Speaker, CAMR is not working now, but reforms can make it work. As you've heard, CAMR's only delivered one medicine to one country since Parliament created it more than six years ago. There's no expectation that camera will be used again unless it gets fixed. 
Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders, testified before a committee that it tried for months to make use of camera to get medicines for patients, but ultimately it abandoned this effort because of unnecessary hurdles in the law. Only one generic drug manufacturer has been willing to use camera, and it said that it's not going to try this process again. But it has also publicly committed to using the system again if it's simplified. To make a version of an AIDS drug that is needed to treat children with HIV, a drug that's not currently available from any other source. Streamlining CAMR does not jeopardize pharmaceutical research and development, including here in Canada. CAMR only authorizes exports of generic versions of patented medicines to certain eligible countries. And these countries were already agreed upon by Canada and all WTO members in 2003, and they're already reflected in the current CAMR as, as it was created by Parliament in 2004. These countries represent a very small portion of the total global pharmaceutical sales and the profits of brand name pharmaceutical companies. Further, the brand name drug companies are entitled to receive royalties on sales of generic medicines supplied to these countries under CAMR. Bill C-393's proposal, or proposed reforms, offer value for money for Canadians. These changes cost taxpayers nothing. In fact, 393's one license solution would make Canadian foreign aid more effective because limited resources could be used to purchase more medicines, and it would also free up scarce resources to invest in making health systems stronger. Scaling up access to treatment also means greater opportunities for producing and distributing good quality Canadian-made generic medicines, meaning more business and more jobs in addressing a pressing global health need. Mr. Speaker, we're here today debating amendments that I've introduced at report stage. And we've had to introduce these amendments because Conservative and Liberal members of the Industry Committee worked together to strip some of the most critical aspects from the CAMR legislation, like the one license solution. But we've heard criticism about this bill and we're willing to compromise, we're willing to work with parties to reach across the House and work together to make sure that this important legislation passes. So we have brought forward only two amendments in an effort to try and make Parliament work and get this legislation passed. But at the core of 393 was and should continue to be the one license solution. This approach would eliminate CAMR's current requirement for separate negotiations with patent holding, hold, patent holding pharmaceutical companies for individual licenses for each country and also for each order of medicines. It would also remove the requirement to determine and disclose in advance of even being able to apply for a license to export a single recipient country and a fixed quote maximum quantity of medicines. These unnecessary requirements have been proven to be the major stumbling blocks to the use of CAMR. The one license solution was removed by committee by a slim majority when it deleted clause 4 of 393 in spite of the fact that it had clear support at second reading. Mr. Speaker, Canadians want Parliament to take action on the Canadian access to medicines regime. According to a national poll, 80% of Canadians support reforming Canada's access to medicines regime to make it more workable so that we can help developing countries get access to affordable and, and life-saving medicines. And dozens of prominent Canadians have come on board to say this is, the, this is the way we should be moving, Mr. Speaker, including a former Prime Minister whose government enacted CAMR. Um, in honour of World's, World AIDS Day, a group of prominent Canadians got together and, and wrote a letter to members of Parliament to say, we want you to support C-393. And some of the signatories to this letter, Mr. Speaker, include the Right Honourable Paul Martin, former Prime Minister of Canada, Janice Alton, National Co-Chair, Canadian Voice of Women for Peace, Richard Bedell, medical advisor for Dignitas. Nigel Fisher, president and CEO of UNICEF. Robert Fox, executive director of Oxfam. Michael Geist, Canada Research Chair in Internet and E-Commerce Law at the University of Ottawa. Karen Kane, artistic director, National Ballet of Canada. Alexa McDonough, former member of Parliament. Steve Morgan, researcher at University of British Columbia. 
and David Suzuki, Companion of the Order of Can Canada. And as you can see, Mr. Speaker, there's pages and pages of signatories. Canadians want this to pass. They want us as parliamentarians to work together to make sure it passes. And I hope that every member will stand up and vote for these amendments and vote to support 393. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> uh, reprise de debat. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member 